So Game of Thrones is finally back. The episode had a lot of setup for the rest of the season, but there were plenty of awesome moments that I'm going to break down, as well as break down the promo trailer for episode 2. So it goes without saying that there are going to be spoilers in this video. So personally, I'm really enjoying the fact that the series has now overtaken the books. And each episode is now going to be more of a surprise. And I'm sure this is probably the main reason why Winds of Winter is taking so long to be released, as the show certainly makes a lot more money than the books. So the season picks up directly after Jon Snow's betrayal and apparent death. It's Sir Davos that finds him. Dolores, Ed and some other members of the Night's Watch still loyal to Jon Snow carry him inside. At this point they correctly surmise that it was Alistair Thorne who is responsible for this betrayal. Now Lady Melisandre comes looking for Sir Davos and is surprised to find Jon Snow lying dead. Surprised because of course she had seen a vision of Jon Snow alive fighting at Winterfell. I think her faith in the Lord of Light is visibly shaken, as this is the second time in not so long that one of her visions have not come to pass, something which she's clearly not used to. Now the first of these visions was that of Stannis victorious at Winterfell. She was so certain that she even convinced Stannis to sacrifice his own daughter to the Lord of Light in order to gain enough dark power to defeat the Boltons and take Winterfell. However, contrary to the vision in the fire, we know that Stannis' army was not victorious, but was rather destroyed destroyed by the Boltons. And in this episode, Stannis was confirmed dead. As Roose Bolton says to Ramsay, thanks to you, the false king Stannis Baratheon is dead, and then asks, who struck the killing blow? Ramsay says he doesn't know, but we of course know it was Brienne of Tarth. So Melisandre is now faced with another instance of her visions not coming to pass. And the shocking reveal at the end of the episode that the Red Priestess Melisandre is centuries old adds another layer of depth to an already fascinating character. She has always been the very definition of confidence. A confidence that we know now comes from centuries of experience, knowledge, and power. Up till now, she seemingly had all the answers and and managed to succeed. Her unwavering faith and devotion has up until now always been rewarded for centuries. So what must she now be thinking? And it's clear that she's struggling for meaning and is perhaps doubting her faith. And it's now going to be very interesting to see what her role is moving forward. Hopefully she will start by resurrecting Jon Snow. I think this is still likely to happen during the course of the season. But the big question is what type of sacrifice will be needed to perform such a powerful act? So in other words, I think that her vision regarding Jon Snow may still come to pass and we may still see him fighting in Winterfell. Of course, there are already instances of people being resurrected resurrected on the show, remember Beric Dondarrion was resurrected several times through the power of the Lord of Light by the Red Priest Thoris. And I think the show is using the reveal of Melisandre's true form to establish more than ever her extraordinary power. Now she refers to this magic that she used to conceal her true form as glamour. Glamour is referenced in the book The Dance with Dragons on several occasions. She even told Jon Snow that she used this glamour when Mance Raider was being burnt alive. She said it was actually another wildling which was glamoured to look like Mance. So in other words, there's still a chance that Mance Raider could still be alive on the show. So Davos, Ed Tollett, aka Dolores Ed, and others loyal to Jon Snow are essentially under siege from Alistair Thorne. So Davos says that they're not the only ones who owe Jon Snow their lives, clearly referring to Torment and the rest of the Wildlings. And let's hope that Ed gets to them in time. We did see Winwin breaking through what could be the gates of Castle Black in one of the trailers, so let's hope they manage to keep Jon's body in one piece. Ramsay Bolton is even more disturbing than ever and it's actually got to the point of ridiculousness on the show with his character as when they ask him what to do with Miranda's body he says she's good meat feeder to the hounds and it's just revolting really. Talking of Ramsay's well-fed hounds they pursue Sansa and Theon who are forced to cross an icy river and I couldn't help but think that it's probably the first time in Theon's life that he was probably relieved he didn't have anything down there to freeze off if you know what I mean. So anyway Sansa and Theon are rescued by Brienne and her squire Podrick. Theon is becoming more and more useful and even manages to save Podrick from certain death. So Sansa's escape is of course bad news for Ramsay as he's being put under a lot of pressure from his father to have a son. And it appears Sansa, Brienne and company are going to go north to Castle Black probably seeking Jon who they don't know is dead for now. So moving on to King's Landing, Jaime returns from dawn with Marcella's body. Cersei is genuinely shattered by the news.
news and believes that all the prophecies of her children dying is coming to pass. And you can't blame her for believing this as two out of her three children have already been murdered. But Cersei is inspired by a resurgent Jamie who delivers the best lines of the episode as he convinces her to forget the prophecy and make their own destiny. Everything they've taken from us, we're going to take back and more. Just wait until he finds out that High Sparrow made her do the walk of shame. The trailers have teased this confrontation and I personally can't wait for Jamie to put him down for good. It's long overdue in my opinion. Marjorie Tyrell is still in prison but surely not for much longer as we have seen Jamie leading the Tyrell army against the High Sparrow. Jamie is on the warpath which I think is awesome and he's going to do anything to protect his only remaining son and the King of Westeros, Tommen. No real surprises in Dawn as the Sand Snakes continue with their plan to overthrow the Martells. They've clearly done their homework and lobbied the support of Dawn's military as the guards simply stand and watch as she kills Doran Martell. And now that Ilaria seemingly has control over Dawn and its armies, she's no doubt going to march against King's Landing and specifically the Lannisters, a fight that Jaime is no doubt looking forward to. Tyrion and Varys are roaming the streets of Marine, ruling in Daenerys' absence. The Lord of Light is being proselyted throughout Marine, and it's going to be interesting to see what happens when the city is converted. Daenerys is being taken to Vyas Dothrak to live out the rest of her life with the rest of the Khal's widows, but we've seen glimpses of Drogon in the trailers, and I think he's going to rescue her soon. And Dario and Jorah are, of course, on her trail. And it's going to be interesting to see who gets to her first, but we know Jorah is going to be rushing as he is, of course, being overtaken by Grayscale. And the big question is how long does he have before it spreads and goes full stone men on us? Arya is also having a rough time begging in Bravos, but after a short Daredevil-esque training session that Stick would be proud of, will be admitted back into the House of Black and White. And it's going to be fascinating to see how all these stories converge over this season and the last two seasons in the series. So before I wrap it up, let's quickly break down the promo trailer for the upcoming episode entitled Home. So the trailer opens with a shot of Bran Stark lying down. Now remember the last time we saw Bran was at the end of season 4. His friend Jojen had just been killed by a group of whites and Mera and Bran are led deep into the cave where they meet the three-eyed raven, who's just a very old man, fused with the weirwood tree. Bran asks the raven if he can help him to walk again to which the raven answers, you'll never walk again but you'll fly. So it's unclear exactly what Bran has been up to all this time as we haven't seen him but he's no doubt been increasing his warging mind control powers and he's no doubt increasing his overall power and knowledge. So we see Cersei with the newly reanimated corpse of the mountain aka Sir Gregor Clegane now going by the name Sir Robert Strong facing off against some gods who are apparently under orders from the king in other words her only remaining son Tommen. Sansa asking Brienne about the fate of Aya and where she could be. Ramsay's convinced Sansa will head to Castle Black and proposes an invasion to get her back. So if his father agrees to this plan we could see the Bolton's forces stretched and weakened especially as they probably think they're only going up against the knight watch and might just find an army of wildlings there as well. Jamie facing off against my least favorite character, High Sparrow, next to Marcelo's body. Alistair Thorne trying to break through the door where Jon Snow's body is, and of course Sir Davos. And Tyrion and Marine decides to have a look at what has become of Daenerys' other two dragons. So there you have it. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and then share it. I post lots of videos every week on comic book movies, TV, including Star Wars, Game of Thrones, and other blockbusters, so why not subscribe? Thanks again. Cheers for now.